Okay, broadcasting live. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, good morning. Um, and to all our viewers out there, good morning. My name is Anne Marie. I am a blogger. I write at household6diva.com. And about two or three weeks ago, um, I was invited to a Google Hangout with Kim Kravitz, one of the ladies who's uh, one of our hosts today. And um, she had this Hangout where they talked about Google Plus and how to use it. And um, I just thought, what a wonderful way for all of us to have a conversation and it be more about you and uh, reader-generated content. So. Uh, here we are today with our first Jane's Cup of Joe. We are two ladies down. Uh, one is down with the flu and one is down with uh, Murphy, as in Murphy's Law. Her internet went out. She was on this morning and now all of a sudden it's fritzing. So um, hopefully she'll be able to join us soon. You could have tried the mobile app. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she needs to use the, the Wi-Fi to get more juice. I don't know. We know um, how that worked for me at the gym the other day. Right. <clears throat> so, um, ladies, if you'd like to introduce yourselves, I'm going to go quick put my puppy in her house because she's jumping at the door. <laughs> so. Yeah. Take it over, Cam. Oh, man. <laughs> dude, that sucks, dude. Okay, um, I'm Kim Kravitz. Um, I'm located near Fort Hood, Texas. Um, Military spouse. Um, I've been married to the Army for, geez, I, I want to say seven years now. Yeah, seven years now. God, it feels like a long time. Um, Anne Marie called me a mompreneur. Um, I own my own photography business. Um, I, well, currently I own my own photography business. I'm getting ready to um, apply to the local police department. So that should be an interesting adventure. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, my husband thinks I'm nuts, but <laughs> he said he would support me, so that's okay. So, um, I have two kids. I have two girls, um, and we have a Bernice Mountain Dog. I think that about covers me. <laughs> Take it away, Amy. All right. Um, I'm Amy, and I'm also stationed at Fort Hood, Texas right now. Uh, the PCS from Germany. I have three lovely children. Um, one's in college, and the other two are at home. Um, I enjoy just watching Anne Marie and I learn a lot from her and my other male spouses of crafting and how to manage my time and budget and, um, and I have runny noses and, um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Oh, um, and we just, we just love being in Texas right now because we've been here before. Yeah, Texas is awesome. Isn't it? Oh, we love the weather. <laughs> It's supposed to get up to like 80 this week, I think, yeah? Uh, no, yes, no, no snow. Huh? Oh, my goodness. No snow, spring fever. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. This week is now supposed to get up to, to 80. It's supposed to get up to 73. That's good. That's good. But the quicker it gets up to 80, the quicker I can open my pool, and I will be happy. I'll come over. There we I'll go. have to clean it. We'll have pool parties. Woo! <laughs> Nice. So everybody in the internet, you are invited to Kim Kravitz's house. <laughs> <laughs> if you find it. If you find to find it. All of us were in Germany um, at different places. Um, and Amy, I, I just love your husband. That's He's just so funny. So He's a comedian, yes. <laughs> so the other two ladies that... Um, we wanted to be part of this. Uh, we're also Cricket Gray. Um, she was my neighbor in Germany. Um, she also has uh, four children. She is an amazing frugal meal planner. And so she's very good at planning her meals out and even doing all of her cooking on one day. So we were hoping to have her to share some of that. Um, and then there's also Lisa. She's the one who's sick with the flu today. She has a little one at home, also homesick with the flu bug. So that means I think she has two or three little ones in, at home on her sick day. Um, she is also um, she is also a blogger. She blogs at crazyadventuresinparenting.com. And she is also um, very frugal, very funny. She's just a, an amazing writer. So... Um, what was, what was her? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. Her? I got it. Never mind. 
Kim, you need to start drinking coffee. I know, but I don't like coffee. It's nasty. <laughs> Try a flavor with some flavored creamer and lots of sugar. It'll start you off. Nah. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with my water. Oh, there you go. So did you, Kim, did you make it to the gym this morning? Oh, my God, girl. Hell no. No, I, you didn't? No. Okay, so I'm like, like I said in my introduction, I'm going to go apply for the local police department here. Um, one of them is hiring. I heard it on the radio. So mm. I've, wanted, I've wanted to be a cop since before I met Aaron, but with the military lifestyle, it doesn't really work all that well. And mm -hmm. Cricket saying she's on, so you might invite her again. It's on mm -hmm. my club. Sorry. <laughs> so <clears throat> the timing's just never been right for me to actually apply for the police department. But we just got to Fort Hood. The timing is perfect. We should be here for a little bit. So um, I started killing myself at the gym two days ago. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That sounds pretty accurate, judging by the pictures you're posting on Instagram. <laughs> and then yesterday, I got, I went to the gym twice, because I'm like, oh my god, I've got to do this, I've got to do it. So I went in the morning on my own, and then I'm doing a Biggest Loser Challenge at one of the local gyms. So I killed myself in the morning, I took my husband to the doctor so he could go get dipped up on pain meds for his kidney stones, and then I went and let my trainer kill me at the gym last night. So, no, I, I didn't go to the gym this morning. <laughs> you're, you're hungover on Motrin, huh? Yeah, I am, actually. I took some Motrin. No, but I have to go this evening for our last chance workout because tomorrow's a weigh-in. Ooh, nice. This shit better be paying off, otherwise I'm going to be really annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, trim the fat has been one of my goals for the new year. I blogged about it a couple weeks ago. And, um, oh, and here, here's one, another one of our guests. This is Maggie. She likes to be part of everything that I do. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. <laughs> um, I, and you can tell she's had on like four different shirts. That's why she's got <laughs> So um, my mantra for the new year has been to trim the fat and just to try to um, stop the snacking. I'm tried, I put the Nutella way up on the top shelf. Um, and uh, try to be more active. And um, my husband and I had this idea that we would start doing insanity with the new year, and we would get up early and, and do this the insanity workout. Yeah. Um, I did day Good one. Morning. Good, Good morning, morning Cricket. You made it. <laughs> um, so I did day one, which was the fitness test, and I felt like an old lady. I felt like, oh my god, I'm going to die. And I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to do the first workout, and, and, and we'll see how that goes, and I'm just going to keep trying. Yeah. So um, we were getting up at, like, 5.30 to do these, and because Seth was on leave. Hi. And um, so we went and, and did the second workout, and Seth was winded. And I'm like, why am I trying so hard to do something that even my husband can't perfectly do? You know, when I'm watching these people, I'm like, okay, I'm just this big couch potato, and that's the reason. And... Um, I walked around for two days sore after that second day workout, and I was like, I need to readjust my fitness goals. Um, my, my new goal is to have 30 minutes of activity, and when I do that, I get a sticker. And maybe in a month or two, um, I'll move to a structured workout, you know, where we work on muscle groups, and there's, you know, someone yelling at me from the television. But, um... I figured it would be wiser. <laughs> I would be much more. Um, yes, pumpkin. I remember you got a sticker the other day. So um, yeah, that was that was that's. I'm still working on. I, I liked your um, comment. I don't, I'm not sure where you posted it, Kim, but about the the non-scale victories. How did you? Oh. I, I don't know. The one that, that comes to mind when you talk about non-scale victories, I posted it like a while back when I first started going to the gym, is that the only person that I, or the only person or only thing that I had to be better than was the, the person that I was yesterday and the job that I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. so, is that what you were talking about or no? Yeah, I think so, or it was something different. Maybe someone else posted it, but it was just about how there are non-scale victories. You know, I chose a healthy snack over my Nutella. Yeah. I chose, you know, and then maybe I fit into a pair of jeans that I couldn't wear before. You know, those things are not on the scale. It's not always 
number of pounds lost. It's it's yeah. how much better you feel and um, the choices that you make, and you need to celebrate those victories too. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Yeah. And now that Cricket has joined us, Cricket, how about you introduce yourself? Uh, has everybody else gone? Now it's my yeah, turn. kind of. Okay. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> so everybody knows my name is Cricket, um, and that Anne Marie and I were stairwell neighbors uh, during the last deployment in Baumholder. Um, we lived in Germany for seven years, and so coming back to the States is kind of a culture shock, and I'm still trying to adjust. Um, I have four kids, uh, 18, 15, 11, and 5, and my oldest will soon be joining the Air Force. Uh, my husband is currently deployed for the fifth time um, for nine months. Uh, let's see. And you don't uh, look a day over 25. What's up with that? Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but the, the scale victory thing, this is um, completely inappropriate. Uh, but I kind of have to introduce myself that way anyway. So um, this morning, I weighed myself before I went to the bathroom. And after I went to the bathroom, I lost three pounds. So weigh yourself after you go to the bathroom. <laughs> totally rewarding. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes. And I have to include that uh, my husband and I just celebrated 17 years of wedded bliss. Wink, wink. Um, and he told me that I had to say hello to him because he's going to be watching this tomorrow on YouTube. So, hello, honey. Woo. Happy anniversary, Rob! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love and it. I love to cook and I love to read, and that's me. Yeah, I commented earlier in your absence about your amazing uh, meal planning abilities and cooking on one day. Ability. I kind of do that out of necessity, though. It's a lot easier on the checkbook to plan your meals. And it's a lot easier on you during the week if you take one day and just cook everything. Gotcha. You just gotta do, that. do we have any, how, how is everybody doing on the page? Can people view this? Kim, are you seeing, is everybody doing all right over there? Yeah, I'm seeing that um, people are viewing it. I don't see anybody has any hiccups. Jessica couldn't find it earlier, but I linked her to it, and now I believe she's tuning in because she's talking about 30 shred or 30, this is the, I can't talk today, 30 day shred. The 30 day shred, and she's, yeah. she's doing it, and she likes it? And that it kicks her booty. Really? Kicks her booty. Oh, maybe I'll have to look into that one. I After. started jump roping. Oh, God, that sucks. <laughs> wow. It really does, but you get a lot, it's, 10 minutes of jump roping is like 45 minutes of cardio. So wow. I don't have all that amount of time, so I jump rope. I'm just yeah. apparently not that coordinated anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> if I can jump rope and I'm almost 40, you can jump rope. Oh, girl. I fake jump rope. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> jump with nothing. <laughs> but yeah, no. it gets caught on my foot and then people at the gym laugh at me and it's all good. That's funny. Fake it. That's why I do it at home. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Anyway. Very cool. Well, um, Cricket, I don't know if you heard. I know you said your your internet was out. Lisa's homesick today with Aww. her. She has a little one who's sick, and she herself is sick, so she's not going to be joining us today. Um, but I have a link to her amazing Nutella crepes. Okay. So even though we're talking about fitness and being healthy, um. Her amazing recipe here I'm gonna do something called a screen share so that everyone can see what I see hold on I have to share it since we were talking about jump roping um, <laughs> well just for our what our viewers um, I'm monitoring the, the household six diva page and the household six Diva community just so Anne Marie can kind of run the show so um hey from Manhattan, Kansas, which, go Manhattan, I used to live there. She says, jumping rope is noisy when you're fat. <laughs> oh, I love her. Well, I, I did post something the other day asking if they had anything like a butt bra because the eyes in the back of my head were going to be black from jumping rope, so. That is awesome. I totally understand. <laughs> that yeah. is awesome. Sorry, I had to share that random funniness. My That's bad. hilarious. That is so true. <laughs> 
All right. So while we're while we're on the fitness kick, here is the uh, Nutella crepes recipe um, that Lisa has blogged. Which after our show is finished, I'll post the YouTube video in a blog post, and then I'll whatever comes up in our conversation, um, I'll share the links to. So here is her amazing Nutella crepes recipe. You can see she's pretty really yummy. Yeah, she's getting really fantastic with her camera. With the raspberries and oh, the powdered sugar. Um, she writes that her pancakes, her children, her pancakes already love children. Her children um, already love pancakes, and so jumping to the crepes that the kids just devoured them. So That's this awesome. might be, you know, a wonderful thing to um, celebrate some of those victories when you know. You go to the gym. And everything in moderation. So you can have some, but just make sure you go to the gym and try to burn them all. Like beer. First Sunday. Moderation. Or wine. Yes. Or wine. I mean, that yes. That's so long away. Okay. Maggie says she... Coffee. What? I ate, breakfast. I ate my breakfast already. I need a Nola bar. Mm -hmm. Glamorous. Glamorous life. Oh, yeah, chocolate, no <laughs> Cricket, I know you had a recipe to share too today. Do you want to talk about um, yours? Me, yes. yes. Uh, but I don't know where to put the link in the jigger. I'm going to put it right here. Cricket, are you on the page or the, the community? I'm on this page where I can see you. You can see me? I can see you. Okay, so now if you I, I'm clicking on the thing. Oh, I found it. We're in chat. Okay, I'll link it to everybody else. All right, I'm slow yeah. today. <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. Um, and this is something that my kids really, really like, and it's called chicken spaghetti. And I got it off Tasty Kitchen. Um, I love it, that website. It's not super healthy, but you could um, steam some broccoli and have that as a side dish. But this is super easy to make ahead and freeze and then cook later in the, you know, just warm it up later in the oven. And my kids love it. And uh, my five year old's pretty picky. So whatever she'll eat. I see your puppies playing in the background. Yeah. I'm supposed to be listening to you, but I'm distracted by them. <laughs> They're taking away the limelight. Let's just... <laughs> I can't say. I'm just kidding. Uh, and I do. I try to sit down a couple of days before payday and um, and make out a meal plan so that I can go shopping payday or the day after. And it is a lot easier on the checkbook and mm -hmm. instead of going back every couple of days to get. Food and of course I have to go back and get milk and eggs and stuff like that, but not the major stuff. So you do a two-week meal yeah. plan. That's your your rhythm. Yeah. Shh. I really need to start meal planning. Well, it would but be awesome. the, the, in the habit of it. It's not too hard. It was hard at first. <sighs> we just started this month. Well, I guess beginning of January we just started meal planning, and I didn't do so well the first week or two. Yeah. But this week. You know, the second payday is always easier because I'm like, okay, these are things we all like. These are all the things that we will eat. And I put some recipes like a tortilla, a chicken tortilla soup that I can put in the crock pot and just throw it all together. And it's simple ingredients. So I just started making a list of my, what I wanted or what everybody wanted to eat. And then we just make, if we don't want meatloaf on a Wednesday, we could do it on a Friday. And then there's meals like a meatloaf where I can double it up and make meatloaf sandwiches on the weekend. And so we're doing, we're trying to play around with that so that we're, it's cost effective, but we're all, Excited because leftovers are great. <laughs> nice. We, I found that it's much, most easiest for us to um, write out the meal plan on Sunday. So Sunday evening, we talk, we look at kind of what's going on during the week with the kids' schedule. Is there any doctor's appointments? Um, and then if Seth knows, um, since moving here, we're and I don't know that I mentioned that we're here at Fort Bliss, um, but Seth is up at the ranges. He has more of a training job. So his schedule is not Monday through Friday. Um, it's it's kind of unpredictable. So um, on Sunday evenings, we'll come up with a list for the week, 
and um, I'll, I'll write out what we're going to, uh, what we would like to eat each night for dinner, and then uh, I'll come up with a grocery list, and I will shop in my own pantry, so I don't buy things that I already have. Right. Or while I'm making the meal plan, I stand there with all the cupboards open and it drives Seth absolutely bananas because I'm a visual person, so I like to see yes. everything. And he's like, woman, close the cupboard. Somebody's going to whack their head. I'm like, you see me standing here. Why are you going to whack your head? Just, just give me some space. I so, um, and then that way, I only buy the things that we are going to eat. So, Faith has a question um, yeah. from the family. Um, do we have any websites that are good for putting together leftovers? Like she, she's got leftovers. She's got cabbage, red beans, and condiments. Um, what can she do with her leftovers? I don't know. That's a great question. I can ask that when I post this later and see oh um, if anybody has any suggestions. Because I did that a, about like two weeks ago. I was like, leftover barbecue chicken, help, help, SOS. And all of a sudden there were 20 comments back and forth. Of oh, people's awesome. responses. Yeah, see, I'm no. terrible with that too. I have pot roast sitting in my refrigerator, and I don't know what to do with it. But I don't really feel like pot roast. But it's leftover from when we had it. Mm. Um, freeze it. Pot roast. Can you freeze it? Like, yeah, you can freeze it. You could also make shepherd's pie out of it too, though. Oh mm. no, I don't like that. That's icky. You don't like shepherd's pie? No. Kim okay, I'm, is our grown-up picky eater. Yeah. <laughs> I am, I am your, <laughs> Mashed potatoes and meat and bisquick? No, no. <laughs> I can't I am, I am your token um, non-cooker. My husband cooks. I don't cook. If it's like noodles, I can boil noodles and I'm good. Um, I'm a really picky eater. I would be great with like peanut butter and jelly every day. Yeah. <laughs> like a college kid. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's all I ate in college. So, okay, so I've been trying to do this, hey, this uh, biggest loser challenge of, hey, let's get fit and healthy, and I can't have ramen because it's got a lot of sodium in it, and it's not really all that healthy for you, yeah. and my husband has been helping me be healthy by eating the ramen for me to get them out <laughs> of the house, and he's so sweet, and he eats them right in front of me. It's great. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, they only cost like 10 cents a piece. You can just throw them away. That's why they're awesome is because they are so cheap. Take them next door. Take them in a bag and give them to your neighbor. <laughs> why don't you go to the um, Asian market and do a substitute instead of ramen noodles where they're really high in sodium. Go to the Asian market there on um, Fort Hood Street. Oh, Mark. I know what you're talking about. I've seen that, but I haven't been there yet. I want to go because it looks really funny because they have like – it's oh. like – all-inclusive place. They have the grocery store, yes, um, the veggie a section. studio. Yeah. They yeah. have like it's like their own little Asian shopping mall. It's yeah, I love it. That's where I go to shop, and it's amazing. I feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys need to set up the Google Plus app on your phone, and then you guys can go on location. You can be our little That's Asian tour guide. <laughs> as long as you make the helicopter sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? On location with Kim Kravitz. <laughs> that would be great because no, because honestly, I if I would walk into an Asian food store, I wouldn't know what they things were. I wouldn't know what to cook with them or what. That would be great. I would personally, I would really enjoy learning more about that. We'll have to Instagram some of that. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. Okay, we'll have to get together and do that. That would be a lot of fun because I could show you the different sections and how you can make different, like different soy sauces. They've got like five different soy sauces. Mm, nice. So yeah, and there's different, and then they have the fresh seafood market, and then they have like the bogogi side. And oh, oh that's so lovely. Lovely. I'm drooling. I'm sorry. Today. Oh, hold on, real quick from the page before we get too sidetracked. <laughs> uh, I got. I have two things, Jessica. Um, she just wants to, she wants to tell us and keep us positive that yes, we can trim the fat. And yesterday she hit a milestone of losing 70 pounds. So <gasps> That's wow. fantastic. Good job. That, hold on, wait. We've got to give her a round of applause. Yay. Oh, we lost Amy. We lost Oops. Amy. <laughs> I love technology. <laughs> Is Amy back yet? I don't know. I just invited her back. Okay, well, while we're waiting on Amy, we can go to the other question that we had on the page. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to butcher this name. I'm really bad with names, so I'm sorry. It's um, Tunisia. 
Yeah, I'm really bad with names. It's T-A-N-E-S-I-A. -E My bad. Anyways, she wants to know um, what can what type of exercises can you do at home while the kids are awake instead of it's sleeping? Because, you know, when you do insanity and stuff like that, it's kind of hard to have a little child running laps around you trying to do this stuff. Right. So, Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out of the closet on this one, and y'all have to promise not to laugh at me. Okay. Okay, we bought a Wii right before we left Germany. Somebody had it in a yard sale. Uh -huh. um, a neighbor, a neighbor friend of ours, and um, my, our family are not gamers. So I mean, I have my original Nintendo from 1985 in our living room that That's we play awesome. once in a very great while, but we never bought into the Wii or the Xbox or just all the mumbo jumbo. That was just not, we're kind of outdoor people and, and, um, and all that. So anyway, so I was like, okay, there's this Wii at this yard sale, right? And I'm like, okay, we're going to, we're going to jump into the 21st century and we're going to buy a Wii. <laughs> and, um, so we bought it and we bought a couple games. And, um, now that we've moved here and, um, we, so we set up our garage as kind of our, video big movie theater type room thinking oh we'll put the Wii out there so we can have the kids do their dance party and and da da da, da. there's just more room there's less furniture so yeah. fast forward to my insanity yeah. attempt and then uh, Motrin induced coma the following two days where I was just like oh my gosh so I decided that I was gonna do dance party mm -hmm. with Maggie and she loves it so we rock out to Gloria Stefan with Dora the Explorer saying, go baby, uh-huh, move your arms this way. And <laughs> it's hilarious. My husband makes fun of me. He's like, that is not a workout. <laughs> and while I follow, I hear you laughing. That's not fair. <laughs> I think it's a workout. I think it's, it's funny. Awesome. That's okay. It is funny. Um, so while it is not a mainstream workout with someone in a sports bra and a six pack, um, it is. Um, it does get my heart rate up. It is aerobic. I am moving all of my limbs. I'm dancing. I'm laughing, and um, okay. some of it. Some of it is a little corny, but Maggie is standing right next to me in a princess outfit, dancing and having a great time. And so, in her mind, we're doing something together. Yeah. Um, so, awesome. and we have just dance, and and I do that with the kids too, and that's a lot of fun. So, there's one suggestion. I don't know. Ooh, ooh, hold on, time out. Those are great suggestions. Oh, we lost Amy again. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's back again. <laughs> Gosh, Amy, are you having technical difficulties? I am. I think the internet jumped from Cricket's house to my house and it's doing the wonky thing. From New York to Texas. That's right. Okay, so I, I don't want to interrupt or like steer the conversation in the next. No, go for it. I like hearing what everyone has to say. Yeah, my boyfriend just said it's 10 o'clock, so that means we need to go on to our next topic. <laughs> so, and That's then right. also, um, moving on to our next topic and tell us what our next topic is and then come to me because I have a question from the wall that goes great with it okay um, our next topic so something we want to do with this uh, Jane's cup of coffee is uh, the first half I mean with this being our first show it's more of an introduction I figured we just have kind of an organic discussion about who we are and and our interests and then we've kind of gone all over the map um, and then partway through I'd like to be able to share some recipes that worked for each of us or something we discover on the web that we really like. Um, and then uh, in the second half, I'd like to have it be a topic, again, suggested by our community or, or we can come up with something where um, all of us have a lot of experience to share as military spouses. And that's kind of what um, my goal or my hope is for my blog or why I created my blog was to be able to share some of my experiences in a way that was positive and um, to generate a conversation so that everyone can kind of share and learn and grow together. So our topic for today is moving and talking about uh, all of us have moved in the last year um, and as military spouses we've all moved I don't know how many times combined we could add them all up um, but uh, so today I wanted to talk, and I'm trying to get my chair to 
rug is all bent underneath my chair. So um, to talk about some of the things we've learned, uh, things that have worked, things that have not worked, and then also just ask for questions and, and conversation from the community. So, Okay, so are you ready for our first question from the community? <laughs> yes, fire away. <laughs> because I think it's great before everybody you know starts on their little um, tidbit about their military experience because it'll, it'll go great. Just trust me. Okay, so Jessica asks, <laughs> it says, what advice can you give or what advice can you ladies give about integrating into a new community? I've been at Fort Carson for a while now and I'm help, having trouble meeting people. I've been told to my face that they aren't looking for new friends here. This is our first stateside duty station. I'm having a hard time embracing it. I think it's mostly due to me enjoying and being so blessed in Germany. So, um, I guess when we're talking about ourselves and talking about our PCSing experiences, um, what is one thing that we've done to integrate ourselves into our new community? And <laughs> so kind of someone else would jump in. Um, something that I have done to uh, meet people in my new new community, um, I'm kind of lucky in a sense that I have school age kids. Um, I remember when my oldest first started attending school when we lived in Germany, and it was this whole new dimension of. Uh, people to connect with and information to um, uh, learn from because I got on the school email list so I got to go be part of the different activities through the school um, through you know other students there were opportunities to volunteer um, and then therefore meet other parents get to know the teachers and um, improve the situation there so again moving here to El Paso um, we live off post so our kids go to a civilian school. So there again, it's a great way to you know meet other moms, other parents that have kids um, to volunteer at the school. Um, so then you get that feel good kind of factor. Um, as military spouses, I know there are different situations where um, you can end up being completely in a civilian community away from a military base. Um, and that can be quite a challenge because people don't understand what it's like to move and how um, we, we leave and we cleave right away. We make new friends and, and we solidify those relationships because um, that's how we you know, sustain our community and our families over time. So uh, being up at Fort Carson, I would encourage Jessica to get involved at ACS. Mm -hmm. Um, start getting involved either volunteering at the school because I know she has a lot of experience with kids she's an amazing patient lady yes. um, and uh, start volunteering her time until she finds a job if, if that's something that she's you know one of her goals um, but volunteering is a, a wonderful way to find people who have common interests and also get that feel good factor, you know, that you're you're making things better for others by, you know, spending quality time. Yeah. So I know that moving here, um, we have been really, really lucky. The people that we bought our house from uh, have been here their entire lives. And across the street from us there's retired military and three houses down from us there's retired military and our whole block does everything together. We do Christmas parties and they have a block party in the summer. Oh, wow, you hit the jackpot. We <laughs> shut down the street. Um, we have, and again, the school age children thing does come into play because I now know parents at the school um, and everybody here, it's a super small town and everybody, every family has their, their family and they have dinner 30 or 40 people every Sunday, you know, we're going to go to dinner at, you know, my dad's house or we, and we don't have that. But I try to um, uh, throw myself on people, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but I, we, me and, um, honest. me and Emma volunteer at um, one of the local um, Christian missionary places and they do a breakfast once a month and um, and we have helped with that and uh, someone suggested the other day too that uh, getting out to the library and mm -hmm. volunteering with their literacy programs um, might be something also to get out there and do and that way you're around kids anyway because I know that Jessica does love kids 
So we just got really lucky when we got here. How about you, Amy? Um, we were just blessed and fortunate enough that we moved back to a place that we had been here three years prior. Um, so wow. we already had standing friends, standing family, like family friends, uh, military families. And um, they basically were like, you're coming back. And they welcomed us with open arms. So we re-solidified those friendships, those family friendships. And we've expanded upon those because they've also met families that have come in from different places. And we've expanded our friendships to more husbands, wives, kids, and then plus going to school. Um, you meet people there, and I, I'm a very protected person, so I don't immediately run up to people and just go, "Hey, how you doing?" and or oh, our kids go to the same class. And but I know it's funny because um, we were talking about backpack carriers, the Ergo, the Bobas. I wear mine all the time, and I have moms that run up to me and go, "Where did you get that? And do you love it? And what do you like about it?" And so I've met moms that way that I'm kind of like, "Ah, oh, I'm soliciting um, <laughs> friendships." <laughs> Um, but they they were like, oh, that's awesome. Did you know our kids are in the same class? So I've been fortunate enough that just doing something simple as wearing a baby on my back has kind of helped, you know, go, oh, we have kids in the same class and we have kids the same age. So even if it's we don't meet every day or even once a month, we see each other on Facebook and we can give each other advice. It's kind of the whole social media has kind of helped me out a little bit and expanding a little bit more outside of my realm of just my little personal friends. Um, and then, of course, friends from Germany that are the German wives I've met, I've run into Walmart, I've run into HEB, and they run up to me and go, Amy, and I'm like, oh my gosh, and it's just a shock to your system going, I remember you from, so yeah, so like I met Tanya or somebody else, and they're like, oh, and I'm like, do you miss Germany? And they're like, no, we love it here, this is great, 24 hour <laughs> service. <laughs> Funny. Funny. So it's been, I've just been really blessed and lucky so far, so good. Wow, you guys make me feel like a really anti-social mom. No, oh, no, you're not. not. Yeah, no. I, I'm, not a, <laughs> I'm not a kid person, even though I have to, but that's okay. That's but, funny. Faith comes up with a great um, point that I know the, the four of us have discussed it before, just not publicly, not yet. Um, Faith says, go to your FRG meetings. So, mm. um, I, I know we all kind of have our own opinion on FRGs because... <clears throat> Sorry, just like everyone else has a different uh, military experience, we all come from different military backgrounds. We all also have a different FRG experience too. Yes. So, um, I know my FR. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. I'll. Do Can I take the lead on this one? Yes, yes, yes. You may. <laughs> <laughs> um, at every duty station I've been to, I've run the FRG, and it's not because I'm a control freak. It's just because there was no FRG, and. Um, I, I'm married into the military. Aaron was already in the military before I met him. So this was a lifestyle that I kind of stepped into type mm -hmm. thing. And one of the, like, okay, I was that military wife who went out and bought the books. And <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I did too. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I went out, I bought the books, read about the military life, heard about this great thing called the FRG. So I was like, oh my God, I really want to be involved in this. Um, Maybe I can meet some other spouses who have a little bit more knowledge on how to handle military life. And maybe um, through the FRG we can connect and they can give me some pointers and kind of mentor me. Um, and so at every duty station that we've been to, they've always had crappy FRGs. They've been non-existent. Um, and, of course, Aaron comes up. You know how the guys come home and be like, honey, so uh, I, I kind of volunteered you for something. And you're like, oh, God, what would you volunteer me for now? <laughs> um <laughs> But when we first got together, I didn't know what he was volunteering me for and how terrible it could be. But, um, yeah, he volunteered me for FRG leader. But he kind of did it in a way. He's like, you know, I put your name up there, and I wanted to come home and ask you first. But in reality, he already said I'd do it. So it was lucky. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, so okay, sorry, I'm getting off on a wild tangent. So at every duty station I've been to, I've run the FRG. Um, I like having... I made the FRGs what I needed. You know, everyone has their own needs. Just like Cricket's not big on participating in FRGs, and I like FRGs. <laughs> it's okay, Cricket. <laughs> I out, dude. I dumped you out. But um, FRGs, you know, they're um, you. They, it's a give and take thing. I think they can be really good. Um, at, at our last, what I ran it in Fort Riley, and I ran it in Germany, and we've been in Fort Hood for five months, and our FRG seems to be non-existent again. 
So right now I have nowhere for Archie that I can go to to meet people. And you're trying very hard to tell your husband not to raise his hand for you yet um, again, or where where do you where's your heart on that? I I don't know. Like if he would have said, "Hey," because when when we first got here, he was like, "Well, um, the FRSA, which um, is a paid position by the Army, who helps FRGs." Just in case you're not familiar with the terminology. Yeah, and, um, and FRG stands for Family Readiness Group. For those of us who uh, might be new to the military life, or Yes. Um, he goes, well, the, FR, the FRSA was very interested to hear that you were an FRG leader in Germany. And I just kind of put my head down and I said, oh, God, not again. My you doorbell know? just rang. I'll be right back. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, our, our experience in Germany was okay. Like, you ladies seem to have a much better experience in Germany than we did. Um, I, it was rough. It was hard. I think anything and everything negative that the military could have shoved our way they did type thing. Not saying that it was bad. I mean, it was a great learning experience for Aaron and I, so that was a plus. But I just wasn't ready to deal with FRG when we first got here. But now I think if they would ask me if I wanted to, to run FRG, I think I might. Maybe I'll co-lead it. I don't know. But I, w I wouldn't be opposed to getting involved. So, yeah, that, that's my spiel on FRGs. Amy, I'll, I'll, come you, I'll come join your FRG if you if you get into one. Will you? Yes. <laughs> you not found your FRG yet either. We have an FRG. Um, it's not as existent as I would like it to be. Uh, okay. It seems to be more soldiers than families, um, which is fine. It's great. That's what they're there for to help too. Yeah. I, I miss what we had in Germany. <laughs> Sorry, <I'm back. laughs> At least in the beginning, the FRG was amazing. Yeah. Um, everyone was involved. There was a lot of volunteering. There was a lot of fundraising, which was let's go down to the motor pool and make food for the guys, or let's take brownies and pizzas or something out to the field for the guys. And they would pay twenty five cents a dollar, and that's where you get your FRG funds. But here it's kind of like we don't have FRG funds, and we don't really feel like trying to raise the money for it. And yeah. I thought, These are, yeah, that brings up a good point because my FRG in Germany, we had little to no money, and we right. had to work. We potlucked. We loved potluck. Yeah, I mean, yes. And we would barbecue, and we would have um, a sign-up sheet saying, hey, um, Aaron and I will provide meat. We'll provide hamburgers and hot dogs, and you guys supply everything else. And usually we would do it um, right next to the barracks, and there was a softball field and then, like, a little open parade field type thing. And um, we would go across the street and play softball. We'd barbecue because Aaron doesn't play softball, but I do. So, um, he would do the cooking, like usual, you know, he likes that cooking. Um, he would do the cooking, and then I would go over and play softball with, with all the soldiers and, and uh, the spouses who wanted to come and participate. And then, um, for our last HUA before we left Germany, and uh, at our last FRG meeting, we had a water balloon fight. That was oh, awesome. Wow. Nice. So, <laughs> every FRG I've run, I've tried to make it very social. I don't like fundraising. I don't do brownies. <laughs> Nobody does. That's a really difficult job to do. <laughs> yeah. no, I don't like doing that. I'd rather potluck. And it seems to work a lot better than fundraising. So, yeah. Well, we've kind of moved, and this is great conversation, but we've, we've kind of moved away from moving. So let's move back to some of the things that have worked for moving and some of the things that you wish you had known maybe before your first move. Um, one of the things I'd like to share that's really worked for me was um, a moving binder. Yes. Um, where, uh, which I've blogged about, which I'll, I'll share a link later when I post this video. Um, that, and I, I wrote down a list rather than trying to hold up the binder, is um, making a PCS, I called it a PCS binder, which is permanent change of station. But this would work whether you're military or not. Um, when our husbands get orders, or your, your service member, um, make lots of copies of the orders because you're going to need them everywhere that you go. Oh, there's crickets. <laughs> you're fine. Um, oh, how nice. I am left out of this. I do not have a moving binder. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> something new. Hopefully, I won't have to create one for like four years. Right? Yes. You do yes. not want yes. to create one in a year and a half. No. Right. 
No. It's, it's actually a really good idea just to have anyway because I have found even since getting back having all of the birth certificates and the yeah. social security cards and the passports having all that stuff together and going to do things like get my driver's license or mm -hmm. uh, you know stuff like that I just have to take this binder and everything that I need is in it already yeah. I don't have to look for anything yeah so it's even a good idea to have even if you're not moving yeah right. see, I'm a hot mess on that department mine is like <laughs> okay hold on can you guys see my screen that is my bookshelf <laughs> Um, all of our important documents are somewhere on that bookshelf, but I couldn't tell you exactly where. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so yes, and I'm looking forward to you sharing your moving binder, so maybe I can put one together. Gotcha. Well, I have just about everything that you get when you go through all your meetings, when you do um, all of your... Um, it's just all of your paperwork, all of your records in one place. Your copies of your orders, your moving documents, um, notes from all of the moving uh, briefs and meetings you go to, clearing documents, inventory of your household, phone numbers for all of the offices at the, pay the base, because eventually you're, I know when we PCS to Germany and then on the way back, um, you don't know if you're going to have access to internet in the interim, and you want to have a list of all of the places that you were at and maybe even the first name of the people you spoke to, um, to be able to call to check on, you know, double check the time for dropping off your car or, um, you know, just the different places to make sure that you have the, the, the direct phone number. Um, and then the second, the second half was all of our records, like our powers of attorney so that I could go to all these meetings. Um, all of our ID numbers, I made a page um, just in Word and wrote down all of our social security numbers or birthdays, the passport numbers because there's two different kinds of passports. There's the tourists and then the government no fee. Um, birth certificates, marriage license, wills, car titles and insurance, all of your banking information, routing numbers, the emergency phone numbers. Uh, make sure you call your bank or your credit card ahead of time so that when you're in transit they don't think, oh, okay, somebody grabbed her credit card and is spending money in Ohio and Illinois and Kansas um, and when really it's your family driving to your next duty station <laughs> so and then any paper documentation you have of when your bills are, are, are done you know like if you end, end um, your local phone or your comp your gas or your electricity uh, make sure you have a paper documentation and then the phone numbers to make sure you can contact them and say no I canceled it on this day this is the confirmation number um, just to tie up all the loose ends when you leave one place and go to another. And so. I also, um, in the front of mine, I have just one of those um, zippy things that the, you can get for pencils and stuff at, at mm -hmm. Walmart. And I keep our passports in one of the zippers. Um, Great it's, idea. It's easier to, and then you can keep pencils and pens in there too just in case you need them. And use page protectors um, also when you're putting everything in. Right. So we're, yeah. we're going to see pictures of like the insides of this, yeah? Gonna... Yes. Uh-huh. Yay. Absolutely. Sorry, I'm a visual person. I'm a visual person. Yeah. Okay, so am I. Has anybody asked any questions on the page? Um, not about moving. Okay. Per se. It's more about like FRD stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe we should make that a topic for next week. We could. Maybe we yes. could, um... In, in uh, discuss that more and maybe Amy and I since we have not found our FRGs yet can go find our FRGs. <laughs> there we you go. Our, we can build an FRG. We can, <laughs> we can build our own but you know what Amy there's already like nine million um, oh, that's true. FRG quote unquote groups on, on Facebook for the Fort Hood surrounding area. Yeah. I don't know that I, that I want to you know clutter clutter Facebook with more stuff like that you know what I mean right yeah. exactly. so we have about eight minutes left what is what is one thing you wish you knew before your first move your first military move or what is something you wish you'd known and and can share as I mean this this moving binder concept has has saved my life on more than one occasion Does it have to be our first move huh can it be a different move yeah sure yeah like okay, let let's do um. Well, I mean, when when you PCS in the states, it's it's 
it's kind of easy. You know, it's not too difficult. You just go from one duty station to the next. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. I, I have never had any trouble going from one duty station to the next. CONUS. Have you, ladies, or no? no? I've never done it, so I don't know. We went from Fort Stewart to Germany, from Germany to here. So, moving from German, moving from another country, is definitely hard. We uh, we spent a lot more time in Frankfurt than we wanted to because our first flight was canceled because there um, were people from Israel that were on the no-fly list um, and they were on the plane so we couldn't fly that day and our cat was under the plane and so Lufthansa had to you know take care of the cat overnight and and it was just, it was just a mess and they put us up in a hotel and just be prepared for everything that can go wrong yeah. to go Because <laughs> yeah. if you're prepared for it, it won't happen. And yes. it'll, be, it'll be good. <laughs> it'll be fine. But, and, and save. And save money for your move because it is very expensive. Yes. CODIS, was, CODIS was not a problem at all. CODIS was easy because it's dollars to dollars to dollars. And yeah. you know, speak the language. You know where to stay at night. You don't really need your chain of command to tell you where you need to stay or help with. Oh. Moving overseas was rough. Um, because you're supposed to have your, um, what is your liaison supposed to help you? Your sponsor. Uh, we didn't have a reliable one. Um, we got put up in a hotel, and that was fine. And no one said you have to pay out of pocket for that. And then you're going to have to go find food without a car. And I'm pregnant, and I'm just hungry, and I'm jet-lagged, and I have a two-and-a-half-year-old. And all I want to do is sleep all day and try to find something with crunchy ice in it, and there's no ice, and no one tells you money and food and inconvenience, and no, you can't go shopping on us. And things that I did not know, I wish I would have. Yes. Okay, so um, sponsors, that's a good one. You know, every duty station that you go to, you get a sponsor, whether you're CONUS or OCONUS, yeah? Right. right. So I, I think, because um, one of my girlfriends is getting ready to move to Germany, and she had a question about firearms, and that was my suggestion to her, is she wanted to know, what was the process of being able to bring her firearms? And we all told her it was going to be a large pain in the ass. And yeah, uh, leave that with family. There's yeah. there's a lot of paperwork, and it's just better not to. Yeah. Yeah. My my suggestion to her was contact your your sponsor because I mean, like I said, even um, and Carrie, we're not trying to make you nervous. I know you're getting ready to go to Germany too. Don't worry, it's okay. <laughs> you know, it really Sorry. is. Easy. It's just it's just a little stressful. <laughs> That's all. At the beginning and at the end. Yeah. yeah, it's very stressful, but um, once you get settled, it's okay. But utilize your sponsors, you know, whether you're OCONUS or going overseas, because they're your um, contact on ground at your new location. You know what I mean? Right. So, something that I learned in Germany was every location, every post is different, and every post will have different roles. So why not utilize your resource that is at that post, who is familiar with those post roles, and if they're not familiar with those post roles, then they can easily find it out for you because they are there. Right. You know I mean, and they can even sign for housing for you if they have a power of attorney. Yeah, they can. So your sponsor is a, a great resource to use. And ACS. I know Ann mentioned ACS earlier. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> they're a great way to plug into your new community too, to let you know what's available. What are yeah. their their classes are usually a. Um, they'll have a newcomer's brief, they'll have sometimes a tour on post, and sometimes they'll even provide childcare for that. Yeah. So um, plugging into that is always a good idea. That is, um, when you're moving, you, you brought up childcare. When you move, if you have children, go get them registered with CDC immediately. That needs to be one of your first stops because um, any of the, the like in-processing briefs or anything like that that you as a spouse can go to, you get free child care. I believe it's 16 hours a week while you're moving. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be a suggestion of mine is when you first get to your new duty station, that needs to be one of your first stops is go register your kids at CDC. And you need to have, what do you, you need a, a physical Shots. exam. Shots. Shot record. Yeah. Orders. Orders, yes. Mm -hmm. And do you need birth certificate or no? No. Okay. So, yeah, I would make sure that you have everything. And you can figure out what you need by going and visiting, um, well, ACS or CDC at your current location. Well, yes, the Child and Youth yeah. Services. Oh, yes. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> There's a lot of acronyms. It's okay. It's I know. I know. So, we're coming down to the wire. Um, I wanted to thank all of you for coming, and Cricket and Amy for battling Murphy and your, your internet. 
uh, flickering. Um, I hope Lisa feels better. And um, I just am really hopeful that this could be helpful for others and that eventually we can start having guests. And, and um, so I will be posting this later on my, on my blog later today. Um, please let us know as readers and listeners what things you liked, what things you didn't like, and also um, maybe some topics for next week. I know we've all touched on family readiness groups, um, that that would be something we could each share our experiences with, maybe um, things that worked, things that um, didn't work so well. Um, maybe a way to improve it. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, they're a very good thing. It's just um, everybody's kind of tired. <laughs> In the military, and stuff. That, you, that you have to be proactive for yourself. You, it's, if that right. Means, like they're not going to have you a silver platter and tell you, hey, this is everything that I have for you. Yeah. You, know, you have to get out and go to the offices and figure out what they have for you. But once you do get out and go, they're so helpful. They're right. really helpful. Cricket, Amy, do you have any last minute things too? When you exercise and you know you're a little bit overweight and it's okay, wear spandex. You won't bounce around so much. <laughs> <laughs> At least when you're jumping rope, right? Yeah, you'll feel tight. And then when you start to lose the weight, you're like, ooh, it, it works. So just keep wearing those spades while you exercise. It's good. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, and thank you, ladies, for co-hosting this with me. This has been our first Jane's Cup of Joe. And we look forward to um, hearing some feedback and hopefully um, – some more participation next week. So with that, have a great week, everybody. Yeah.